today we're going to look at how you can slash your Microsoft 365 license costs and improve productivity and collaboration. But so what are we actually talking about and why are we doing this webinar? Well, we're explaining how you don't need to be on Microsoft 365 or Synology. You can do both. You can have sort of a hybrid setup. Uh, you can reduce your costs and at the same time still be collaborative and effective. Uh, my name is Thomas. I work in our solutions team. Uh, I'm a product specialist here and uh, I deal with a lot of the deal rigs and projects. So if you have any of those and they get raised, you may see me on them. Um, so let's go over what we're covering today. We're going to look at the Synology productivity tools, uh, the benefit of using Synology productivity tools over Microsoft 365, and what else you can get on offer from them. We're then going to look at building an on-prem solution. So we're going to look at how you spec it out, uh, make sure it's secure, an on-premise suite. And then we're going to go over sort of building that hybrid solution and determining when and where you need to replace Microsoft 365 and, and how best to do so. Now, I don't know if, how many of you are aware, but Microsoft holds 46% of the market, this being the cloud productivity suite. Uh, these stats are according to Statista. So that, that's that's a reasonable market share. And we brought up the Microsoft uh, 365 costs here. So we've got the business basic plan at £4.90 the standard plan at £10.30 and the premium at £18.10. Now, these are per user per month, and this is a price that's not with VAT. But £4.90 a month doesn't sound too bad for per user. But when you break it down for a company with 100 users, looking at £490 a month, that's sort of nearly £6,000 a year, and over five years, you're looking at nearly £30,000. If you compare that with a Synology offering, that's a DS1821 plus with 128 terabytes to make sure that we meet that same one terabyte threshold per user, you're looking at 4,000 pounds. It's quite a considerable saving. If we then look at, obviously you need to then back up your data as well. So we'll add that in. Now we're using active backup for Microsoft 365 and that same DS1821 plus here on the Microsoft side. So that's that 4,000 pound I did on top, giving you a total system cost of around 33,400 pound. Looking at the Synology side, we just replicate what we already built, the license-free software with Hyper Backup, and we back that up, and our total system cost is around £8,000. Now, this obviously is a good thing in terms of if you're using the system long-term, as is obviously a great example. If you're only going to use it for a short term, then that monthly cost is probably is better off because you're spending 8 k there instead of, you know, a lot less. So we're going to look at the two Microsoft plans here, the basic plan giving you pretty much everything apart from desktop apps and there's no local storage or backup the standard plan giving you those desktop apps but still no local storage and backup and then we'll compare this then with the Synology offering so we offer pretty much the same as the basic plan you have mobile apps for docs and spreadsheets with the plan that we worked out previously there was about one terabyte of storage in comparison and of course you've got that local storage and the capability for backup uh, so before I crack on with the, the rest of the webinar, we're going to look at what you can win today, which is a, a DS118 plus, sorry, DS118. It's a versatile, powerful, and compact storage system, like a really powerful one-bay system. So if you keep around to the end, we'll, I'll sort of explain how you can win that. So we'll start by looking at the Synology productivity tool. So this is sort of how we can help sort of move you away from Microsoft 365 and still give you that powerful productivity. So I've just got a few popping up on screen here, sort of a wide sort of range of, of what's available all the way from sort of Mail Plus down to our, our Synology slides there in the bottom corner. But we're going to start with Mail Plus. So everyone knows what email is. You will use it similar to Gmail or, or the Microsoft Outlook. Uh, but Mail Plus is a great interface. So it's private as well, meaning more secure and you own your, and control your data. And it's not just email. You have the calendar integrated as well, meaning you can add events from the mail. So if you've got a date being sent in via an email, you can just add that to Synology Calendar via a little link. Now, I do want to highlight that Mail Plus does have licensing. Um, as 99% of our apps don't, I thought it's worth mentioning that this one does. But you do get five free Mail Plus licenses with every system. Uh, the licenses do not expire, and they can be migrated. So... If one of your users leaves and you have a new one join, that same license can be used. And there are, of course, additional license packs available, both in 20 and five packs. Now, if you do need this, 
you can speak to Amir. He's one of our exclusive. He is our exclusive Mail Plus system integrator in the UK. Uh, he did a webinar about a month ago. And if you need the security Mail Plus, please sort of reach out to Amir and he'll be able to help you with that. And we're also going to cover Synology Drive. So it's like a private OneDrive. Uh, it gives you lots of control um, and it's GDPR compliant. And you get sort of anytime, any platform access. So no matter where you are, any time of day from your desktop, mobile, you can access your files. You can also sync and back up. So similar to OneDrive with the synchronization, but it also has a backup feature. So it allows you to back up your data to a separate folder on the NAS. And then the smooth collaboration. So within the Office suite, so Synology Office, you can edit sort of your documents uh, all together all at once, which we'll demo a bit later on. And then finally, there's the powerful management tools. So you can track how files have been shared and you can also limit access. So for example, if you want to stop your employees uploading specifically .mov files and you didn't want that, you can specify down to that granular level to stop that happening. So I mentioned Synology Office. We have the documents, the spreadsheet and the slides. And there's real-time syncing, so you can sort of instantly see what changes have been made. And so sort of add, add comments, comments and suggest yeah. things, and there's even a little chat plugin, which allows you to chat with your, your colleagues within the document. And then if you have any problems or you're making a mistake, you can go back because there's this sort of version history there, so you can restore from a previous point. So we're going to look at multi-user editing uh, and that inbuilt chat functionality now. So we'll go over sort of restoration, so we'll make some changes that we didn't mean to, and then restore that. We're going to show off the collaboration features, so that chat function, allowing a colleague to help us out if we need something. We're going to go over the encryption of the file, so the ability to add a password, and then the sharing functionality, so share that document publicly, and then they can use that key that we've set. So here we are in our document. This is one of the games I, I played and was a part of. Uh, we can see that we've got Les and Peter here. We click on Les, so we can see where Les is in the document. I'm just going to highlight this section here and delete this so that we can then sort of have an example that even if you make a mistake, you can go back to your version history. You can pull it up, grab from a, an older date. So we can see in this one that that information is there that we lost and we can restore that. So we've gone through, we deleted information. We then decided that we need that information back. So we've gone to that restore point and pulled it back in. And you'll see now that when we scroll down, that that information is now back. So nice, quick, easy fix. And it's just refreshed the document for Peter and Les, so they're both at the top of the screen now. So next, we're going to check out that chat plugin that I mentioned. So Peter took a lovely Love photo the at the game, and, and we decided we want that one instead of the one that's at the top. So I'm going to message Peter, asking him if he can remove that file at the top and put in the photo that he's taken. Um, I don't have access to that photo, so I need Peter to do it for me. That's, that's why we're asking him to do it. So he's going to remove that top photo for us. And then as he deletes that, he's going to put in the photo that he took of our lineup at the start of the game. And there we go. So you can see that instant sort of sync and, and migration. Sorry, not migration. The instant sync and collaboration that's available through the chat function. So I'm just going to thank him for that. And we've decided that we want to show off our encryption as well. So we're going to encrypt this document. CT password coming in handy there, putting in my password for me. And so we've now encrypted that with a password. So we showed that collaboration. We're now sort of encrypting our file, making sure that it's all safe. And then we're just going to show that you can also share this document publicly. And in doing so, you know, that encryption sort of password that we set is also still there. So it made it so anyone can do it for the demo purposes. We click save, and then we're opening it in a new tab, and we're pasting that in just to prove that it's being shared publicly. So you can see us connecting to the NAS, and it's using our spot webinar quick connect ID. Obviously, because I'm on the same network, it also show the IP address. If you're externally, it won't. We put in our password there, and you can see that we're back in the document, and it's using an unknown user, so it's proving that it's been shared publicly and accessed outside. So we covered off our collaboration and a bit of the sort of chat functions and the sort of encryption functions there. We're now going to go over sort of uh, the more admin side of things. So how you can sort of lock down permissions and put in restrictions. 
So we're back in this document and you can see that I'm in the in a private browser now, logged in as a different user. Uh, we have the option here to share a public link. So I'm just showing that that's available. And then we're going to go into our Synology Drive admin console. We're going to open that up and go to our settings and our sharing. And we're going to stop allow public sharing. So you can stop it so that no public sharing is allowed. There's also other options. So if I now refresh this page and I'm set as a basic user in this, I still don't have any admin rights. You can see when I click on sharing settings, that public option is now disappeared. So it shows that you can limit what access people have to share files. So we've gone over our Synology productivity tools and what you can do there and the collaboration and productivity sort of capabilities available. But we're now going to talk about building an on-prem solution. So how you can save money and take ownership of your data. If we take Snorty UK as an example, we've got sort of 29 employees. You can see sort of them separated out here into sales, marketing, our MD, our finance, our support, warehouse, and HR teams. And when we break it down, we worked out that our sales, marketing, MD, and finance need a Microsoft 365 license for PowerPoint, so the presentations like the one you're seeing today. And our finance guy obviously needs access to Excel, so we've given him that. But our support team don't use any of our the 365 applications, so that's not needed. Our warehouse team don't either. They're happy with spreadsheets. And our HR team, predominantly internal communication, so it's not required there either. So that puts 16 out of the 29 users no longer requiring a Microsoft 365 license, and 12 of them who still do. So this means that initially you're spending £3,585 for 29 users over one year and not needing Mail Plus or Synology Nas, but when you switch to only having 13 users, um, and that's £1,606, you have 16 Mail Plus licenses, but five of them obviously you get with the system, so it's only costing you £550. That's a one-off purchase. And then obviously we need to buy the NAS, so that's a £1,200 purchase. Again, one-off. So we've migrated 16 of our employees over. And in year one, maybe not the, the biggest of savings, as we said before, about cloud and sort of on-prem, not necessarily, depending on the time you use it, being the biggest cost saving. But by year three, you're saving just over £4,000. By year five, you're saving just over £8,000. So you can see there's quite a significant saving there. Um, so we're going to move on to sort of discussing sort of the capabilities of systems. And um, we're going to use these candidates here, a two bay, a six bay, a 12 bay, and a 24 bay. Uh, the two bay costing sort of around 800 and the, the fast station up to 24,000. Uh, that's with all systems. We've maxed out the RAM um, and we'll point out why that is in a second. But if we look at Synology Mail Plus, you can see that the DS220 bus has 50 users and the fast station has 2,200. Now that's not just users, that's concurrent users, so that's all at the same time. And the maximum server performance per day emails is 936,000 for the DS220 plus and a whopping 5.7 million emails per day for Synology plus on the flash station. Excuse me, that. Um, so with our two bay in the drive state, it's 350 users and the flash station is 2000. Again, that's concurrent sync clients. So that's all at the same time synchronizing. So the capability is obviously way, way more. And with the flash station, we've seen that there is, uh, we, there's a case study with a company called eTree and they have 4,000 users on a flash station that's in high availability with another one. And then the recommended number of posts uh, for a two bay is about 5 million. So that's the files. Now this can be more important than the sync clients. And for the flash station, we've got 100 million. This is, of course, a recommended number. With Office, the two bay gives you 600 users. Now that is the maximum number of users we would recommend. And the flash station has 3,400. As I mentioned previously, the reason we maxed out the RAM on the previous slides is because all models in this example have been tested with the maximum amount of RAM installed. 
Now, what are the biggest hardware factors when looking at these three applications? Well, when it comes to Mail Plus, CPU is quite important, but it will depend on your daily flow rate of emails. So if you're getting lots of daily emails, your CPU will be more important. But if you have, say, a big employee base, but you don't get many emails regularly, then the CPU becomes less important. The RAM for any database is important. So with Mail Plus being quite a large database, paying all your emails, RAM we would recommend. We'd suggest to avoid hard drives um, and stick predominantly with SSDs purely for the speed. And then with drive, CPU and RAM will increase your performance. So the faster you, you need things to be with the, the bigger amount of users you could have, obviously the better your CPU and RAM we'd want. And then with hard drives, we'd recommend them, but only with a cache. And again, with the SSDs, we'd recommend it as a cache. And then with Synology Office, the sort of large, uh, larger user account count gets, the more we recommend to look at CPU and RAM as a, a higher priority. Um, hard drives, again, we'd use with a cache. And then SSDs, we'd recommend with a large file count. So we're going to go on to some business examples now. So we pulled out this DS1621 Plus for 50 users. Um, you can see that we've made account to make sure that all applications can have their own space. So made sure that three times using three applications, so three times the amount of users, making sure that's fit. And then the same for the RS4021 XS Plus, we've gone with 250 employees and we're making sure that that fits that case. And just the note to point out that we ensure to ensure performance and data security is the best practice. We, may, we would recommend not running Drive and Mail Plus on the same system, but to make things cost effective, we're going to show you an example of how we do it in this case. So for our 50 employees, based on our sort of earlier workout, we sort of going to use 30 for Synology and we'll keep 20 on Microsoft based on what we worked out with Synology UK. Some stats here to kind of help build out this system. So Mail Plus accounts, anything under 250, we'd recommend eight gig of RAM. And then as you can see, as it goes up, the more RAM is required. And then file size. So this is not the total file size. This is the size of the files within Drive or within your file system. Uh, depending on the size of that file, depends on how much RAM we rec would recommend you have. So anything greater than 10 gig in size, we would recommend at least having 16 gig of RAM. And then we sort of just put in a, a case as to where you'd need a SSD cache. So for this case, we've got Drive. We have email services, so with both, we'd want some RAM in there. Sorry. So with, with this, we can work out we've got less than 250 accounts. In this case, we only have 30, so 8 gig of RAM is fine. Our average file size is sort of between 1 and 5 gigs, so 4 gig there is fine, so we'll need roughly 12. So with these 30 users, we obviously have one DX1621+. We're going to use two SSDs as we recommended with Mail Plus. So this will be in RAID 1, giving us seven terabytes of usable space. Then with our hard drives, we've gone with four 16 terabyte drives, giving us 48 terabytes of usable space. That's in RAID 5. And we've gone with that 16 gig of RAM to cover off that 12 that we said. And we've gone with a cache as we recommended with Drive and Office. So that's going to help there. And of course, you're always going to want a backup. So this is for all 50 employees, not just the 30 now. But you're going to use that DS1621 Plus again. We're going to put six 16 terabyte hard drives in. We're going to set that up in RAID 5, giving us 80 terabytes of usable storage. And of course, we can be using Active Backup for Microsoft 365. So to back up Microsoft 365 data, and then Active Backup for Business to back up our previous NAS back to this one so that all our data is safe. We're going to put in that same RAM so we can use it as a failover if needed. And then we're going to put in our SSDs. Um, so our M.2 SSDs, so this is for our cache, which will help with a quicker retrieval if you do need to sort of pull those backups into the main system. Um, so let's cover off our 250 employees now. So we're going to go with roughly the same as before. We're going to take just over half, so 150. Uh, we can move across to Synology. And we've got the same calculations there in place, except I've added one more in this slide. 
which is about the volume size. So anything under 100 terabyte, 108 terabytes is a volume. Two gig or better will be fine. But if you're looking to have a volume size between 108 and 200, you're going to need 32 gig of RAM um, just to allow you to create that. And anything 200 up to one petabyte needs to be 64 gig of RAM or more. But we do recommend when you're looking at a volume of this size to be very careful. And more than likely, you'll have a conversation with us about this anyway. So we'll take those 150 Sonoda users and we're obviously going to put them on an RS4021 XS Plus. And we're going to use six seven terabyte SSDs. And we're going to put that in RAID 5. You also got the option for RAID F1, um, which will allow for one SSD to sort of go end of life quicker. So it will use up more space and run it sort of to its death effectively um, so that you don't have them all fail at the same time. Um, and then we have our hard drives. So we've gone for 10, 18 terabyte hard drives in RAID 5, giving us 160 terabytes of usable space. So making sure that we meet that one terabyte per user threshold. And then we've gone with 64 gig of RAM to cover off our sort of big volume if we want it. Obviously, we'd always recommend having multiple volumes and multiple shared folders. We've gone with an M2D20 adapter card, which is our own dot two drive adapter card. Um, and then we're going to use that as a cache for our drive and our office. And of course, you can't forget RailKit so that you can slide the system in and out. And once again, we're going back to our 250 employees again, and we're going to be looking at backup. So we have our main system. We're going to use all 16 bays for 18 terabytes of hard, like hard drives. So that gives us, in a RAID 5, 270 terabytes of usable storage. Again, we're going to use Active Backup for Microsoft 365 and Active Backup for Business to back up our 365 tenants and our previous NAS. Uh, we've gone again for that same 64 gig of RAM. So that again, it can be used as a failover. We've kept our M.2 adapter card and our SS M.2 SSDs. So again, for retrieval, if we do need to bring anything that's been backed up back onto the live server, it's quicker and can be done much easier. And of course, once again, you can't forget that rail kit. So we covered off how to build an on-prem solution, hopefully in sort of reasonable amount of detail so that you can have a look at yourselves and, and see whether this is something that you could do. But we don't necessarily need to just build a Synology system. We've talked about the hybrid solution, so we're going to cover more of that now and how we can do that. So if you do need to replace Microsoft 365 or at least migrate some across, how do we do that? Well, you can take the Microsoft 365's Outlook and migrate that to Synology Mail Plus. Well, you could before, but Microsoft have recently made a change where they've removed basic authentication to so things like IMAP and POP3. Um, so as you can see in the screenshot on the bottom right, this was something that we could do. Uh, but with this change, which is a good change by Microsoft to make things more secure, we're just working on updating our own system so that we can do this. Um, so how do you migrate your data? So you're talking about your OneDrive, Microsoft 365 data. Well, you can take that through CloudSync if it's like a smaller company. So if you're talking 10 users, you can do it per account. And that's how CloudSync works. Um, so I put a little screenshot of that here. So this is me syncing up my OneDrive for Business with the NAS that I was on. If you want to see a demo of that, you can check out my last webinar where it shows off sort of how you can run the, the features of a Windows Server without sort of the crippling licensing costs. So if you want to look at the CloudSync demo, have a look at that after this. But we are going to show you if you've got multiple accounts, how you can migrate that data across the Synology office. So we're going to be using Active Backup for Microsoft 365. Now, this isn't to back up the data. This is just to migrate it. So we'll only be doing it once. So we're going to pull that data in. And then we're going to import a document from uh, our folder that we've migrated across using Active Backup for Microsoft 365, import it into the Synology office so that we can show that Synology Office has the same sort of abilities as uh, Word would. And then we're going to export that as a Word document so that you can sort of still share it externally. So if we have a look at that now, you can see that we are on our, our NAS, so we're within DSM. We're going to go to our applications, and we're going to open up Active Backup for Microsoft 365. And then we're going to go to our task list, and we're going to click Create. So this is all part of the process for migration. This isn't a backup, as I said. This is just migrating our, our sort of data across. 
Um, so we're just going to create a backup task because we don't have one to relink. We'll click next on this. Um, so we're going to use Microsoft 365. The operated by 21 Vinet option there is for, for China. So we're going to put our certificate password in, which is just a password that we set ourselves. And then we're going to click next. And this will bring up our sort of sign in. So we're going to use another account. We're going to put in our John S email, which is our admin account for our 365. Um, so we're going to paste that in, click next. We're also going to drop in our password for this. So Microsoft's basic authentication is still available here for uh, email and password. Um, and you can see C2 password has popped up asking if it wants to sort of need to store that information there. So C2 password is nice and helpful. It's a cloud-based password system. Uh, Synology Active Backup Microsoft 365 is asking whether we're happy to give Synology the access, which of course we are. So we're going to click accept there. And of course, we're going to agree to this, which is moving our data and allowing permission for this now to take. So we're going to click agree. So we're using, again, this backup as a migration. This isn't an actual backup. We're just connecting it this way so that we can pull our files in. So it's reg registering with Azure ID and then connecting to Microsoft 365. And then it's going to be sort of, once it's connected up, it'll say authentication is successful. C2 popping up again, asking if we want to save our password. Um, but we're going to click download and continue. Um, so that's downloaded our key. We're then going to name this uh, Active Backup for Microsoft 365. And we're going to use our support team. And then we're going to pick our, our backup destination as our support folder, because that's obviously where we're going to want our support team to go. Uh, currently, it's backing up all 118 users. We don't want that. We just want our support team. So we're going to scroll down and find our support group. So we've gone in, uh, we've sort of authenticated ourselves. We're now just making sure that we pick the right amount of users. So we have our 12 there. And then we're going to click next. You can see we've got 12 users, one group. And it's going to click next. And then it's going to start the migration or the backup. But for us, as I said, it's going to be used as migration. Uh, we're OK with that. So we're going to scroll down, just make sure that we're happy with what the settings are and we are. So we'll click next on that. And then on this next screen, you'll see that we want to do a manual backup. So we don't want it to be continuous. We don't want to schedule it. We're just using it once as a migration. We're happy with that. We're happy with these settings. So we're going to click done. So it's going to create that task. And we obviously want to run the backup now because we're going to work great. So we'll let that run. We come back once it's all finished. So you can see we've got 12 OneDrive uh, users there. So we're going to go into our support folder, dive down into this active backup from Microsoft 365 folder, find our John S account, open up that OneDrive and find that familiar document. This is a .x file, so you can see that it's a Word document. And we're going to open this in Synology Office. So we can see once it opens that the formatting is, is very much okay. So this is a word format currently. All looks fine. So this all as it should be. We're just looking over so that you can see what the word format looks like. So that nothing changes when we import it into Synology Office. So we're gonna dive down again, find that John S folder, go to the OneDrive folder, select that one, and then click OK. So now going through the process of importing that document to Synology Office, it always needs somewhere to save because it's a different document than a docx. And you can see that the format's exactly the same. Nothing's changed. We're very happy with how it looks. And we can now edit this file sort of often as nice and easily. So we just can prove that we can make a change. So if I scroll down and just happen to highlight the manner match in this case, just Happened to be myself. Uh, it's a lovely game against New York. Uh, and then we're just going to show that you can export this file as a Word document. So if you needed to share it externally and you didn't, they're not using Synology, you can do this as a Word doc. So to, to conclude and, and wrap everything up, we've gone over a cost saving methodology. 
So determining when and where you can replace Microsoft 365 and how you do so. Uh, working on that hybrid setup, so understanding what tools to use for migration and backup. So making sure that you're aware that when we use that to back up, it's for migration, but you can also use it to back up your data as well. And making sure that you're also aware that you don't have to be on one or the other. You can make significant cost saving by sort of being in a hybrid system. And then lastly, we went over building a solution. So understanding what the requirements are to spec out a fully fledged system. 